my name is uh, Barin Gellert. I'm a medical doctor and an internal medicine specialist. And I'm uh, working at the Department of uh, Surgery, Transplantation and uh, Gastroenterology at the Zemmerweis uh, University. Uh, my vision with my scientific work is to reduce mortality and morbidity related to pancreatic biliary diseases. And to uh, make this vision a reality, I intend to enhance the safety and efficacy of uh, different uh, endoscopic interventions used in the management of uh, these disorders. Um, to fulfill this uh, uh, vision and mission, I uh, am currently chasing two specific goals. The first is to understand the role of different uh, ERCP techniques following the following Roux and Y gastric bypass operations. And the second is to improve the endoscopic management of uh, ward of pancreatic necrosis by uh, the comparison of two treatment strategies. Let me introduce the first one. It, performing ERCP uh, can become quite a challenge for endoscopists following Gruen Y gastric bypass procedures due to the surgically altered anatomy. And considering the current trends in obesity, this can become an even greater problem in the future. The three most often uh, used ERCP techniques uh, in these anatomical conditions can be seen on the slide. The, the two current standard methods are the enteroscopy and laparoscopy assisted ERCP techniques and the newest one is the so-called um, uh, endoscopic ultrasonography directed uh, transgastric ERCP, abbreviated as, as EDGE. Based on uh, the, uh, the data of this table, we can conclude that procedures with higher uh, technical success rates have also been associated with higher overall adverse event rates as well. And due to this, um, uh, this uh, controversial, due to the controversial nature of these findings, no clear consensus has yet been reached uh, for the most suitable ARCP option for patients with uh, Ruin Y gastric bypass anatomy. <laughs> And uh, due to these uncertainties, we aim with our project to fill in knowledge gaps about the role and utilization of these ERCP techniques in patients with Ruin Y gastric bypass anatomy. Uh, our clinical question uh, will deal with the comparison of these ERCP techniques uh, to investigate whether one is uh, uh, better in terms of safety, feasibility, and clinical uh, success rate uh, than the other two. We would like to perform a direct and an indirect comparison with the included data. Uh, for, this, uh, we, uh, for the direct comparison, we intend to investigate these ERCP techniques for, clinic, for outcomes like clinical and uh, technical success rates and procedure-related uh, procedure uh, mortality and morbidity. And we would like to include basically the same features in the COCOPOP framework for the indirect analysis as well with the addition of the measurement of persistent fistulae formation following the EDGE procedure. Otherwise, the clinical question and, and hypothesis would remain the same. A systematic search was performed in the end of November with the, uh, in, in the three databases with the highlighted amount of found articles. And uh, full text selection has been accomplished and uh, the data extraction is about to begin. In my next project, uh, I am going to focus on the comparison of two endoscopic uh, treatment strategies in the management of ward of pancreatic necrosis. It's common knowledge that acute necrotizing pancreatitis accounts for approximately 5 to 10 percent of acute pancreatitis cases, and as you can see it on the slide, the rates of early organ failure and, and uh, need for uh, rates of early organ failure and need for intervention and, and mortality are still uh, unacceptably high uh, in these conditions. So what can be done to reduce these numbers? First, I would like to clarify two expressions. Void of necrosis is a late local complication of acute necrotizing pancreatitis, which basically means a, a mass of necrotic tissue with a well-formulated um, encapsulating wall. And direct endoscopic necrosectomy is one of the endoscopic treatment options which can be carried out in the management of this void of necrosis. This endoscopic necrosectomy includes um, the deployment of a lumen opposing metal stent between the necrotic cavity and the GI lumen and then uh, entering the cavity uh, with an endoscope via the stent and performing the debridement directly from there. But uh, how exactly uh, this should be done? When exactly and when yes, then how often? These are, these are basic questions that uh, have not been answered yet, 
but uh, due to their pivotal role in the management, we think that answering them is uh, paramount for successful endoscopic treatment. And uh, because of that, we aim with our trial to, to find um, uh, a solution for one of these dilemmas emerging uh, in the treatment of uh, endoscopic transluminal management of void of necrosis, which dilemma is highlighted with red on the slide namely the timing and choice, the proper timing and choice of tight endoscopic necrosectomy in the management of ward of necrosis. And thus our aim could be, with the trial could be no other than uh, to improve the safety and clinical efficacy uh, of the endoscopic step-up approach in the management of uh, ward of necrosis. The clinical question should focus on the uh, on the comparison of tight endoscopic necrosectomy uh, being performed regularly versus in an on-demand fashion. And these interventions should be investigated for outcomes like clinical success rate and time to clinical success and uh, for um, uh, procedure-related morbidity and mortality, uh, basically. The inclusion criteria uh, should contain criteria which were formulated in the corresponding uh, guidelines previously. There's nothing new in this, and uh, as I said before, in one of the treatment group, the direct endoscopic necrosectomy would be uh, performed only in cases of uh, worsening of the patient's clinical state, and in the other group, it should be performed in a scheduled way. And the hardest outcome for the trial should be the rate of complete uh, one resolution at given follow-up intervals. As a summary, I would like to add that uh, the expected uh, submission dates are, will be at the end of next summer, and hereby I would like to thank you for your attention with the advice for Mark Twain, being careful about reading too many half books as you may die of a misprint. Thank you very much again. Thank you for your excellent presentation. My question would be regarding the second topic, how many patients do you plan to involve in that project? Uh, this remains to be calculated. So this is a plan for a rand multicenter randomized control trial. Uh, the details uh, are, are, are still uh, matters of the future. There, it will be calculated and we will discuss it later. I, I don't want to give any forecasts now. Okay. Thank you. For the world of necrosis, endoscopic treatment is, is uh, you know, we are, we are uh, more and more car careful with this uh, treatment method and uh, uh, I think we do it a lot less than we used to do. And what is your uh, number needed to treat to, to, to get a conclusion on this study? I uh, only I can answer you uh, this question with uh, results of a, a previous pilot study by our research group which uh, it was of course just a pilot study, but uh, it, in, it enrolled only uh, 18 patients. And, but uh, the results uh, were uh, absolutely favorable for the, for the routinely performed uh, treatment group. So I think, the, uh, again, I don't want to any, give any false guesses uh, about the, the, the concrete numbers, but I, um, my estimation is that uh, about a hundred pa patients uh, will probably be enough. Be enough. <laughs>